Imran and welcome back to my kitchen. Now I'm going to show you how to make my wonderfully simple one pot wonder dish, my leek and pea risotto. Now this is one of those dishes that if you've had a long day at work or working from home as we're, a lot of us are doing now, or if the kids are bothering you about what's for dinner tonight and you just don't know, this is the dish you make. Really easy to put together, minimum effort, maximum output, and tastes delicious. So let's get on and start with some of the cooking and I'll go through the ingredients as we go. So firstly, on a medium heat, you want a larger uh, sort of saucepan, get that on there, and then we're gonna get some rapeseed oil in here, perhaps maybe a tablespoon, that goes in there. And with that, we're gonna go with a couple of squares of the wonderful salted dragon butter. Maybe three go in there. Now, this is the wonderful salted butter from uh, Dragon. Tastes delicious. Now, I've put oil and butter in there because they're gonna help one another, okay? So you've got the oil in there that's gonna prevent the butter from burning. And you've got the butter in there for flavor, and that's what it's all about. So the butter for flavor and the oil to help prevent the butter from burning. So you get that cooking away there, you get that melting away. And into that, then you want to get sort of your base uh, for this risotto. And as I've mentioned in the title there, it's got leeks in it. So as you can imagine, we're gonna pop some leeks in there now. So the leeks go in. And red onions in this particular recipe. And you just get that all in there. Just mix that around, coat that in the oil and the butter. Now, you might be thinking, why have I used leek and then a red onion as well? Now, traditionally, a lot of people use uh, a white onion or shallots for a risotto. I've used a red onion purely because I prefer it. I prefer the, the slightly uh, calmer, milder taste of it. Um, also, I think it's really important to eat um, different types of colored vegetables to give you a really broad nutrient sort of range. And it's a very similar reason why I've used the leek. I've used the leek to add in an extra vegetable as well as the flavor. So we're getting a really broad uh, nutrient spectrum. And remember, I, I cook for my, ki my kids and my wife and my family, and we all eat this dish. And I want us to have not only a tasty dish, but a healthy dish as well. I say healthy, just watch how much cheese I put in this. But let's get this sweating down. Right, next goes in the garlic. Do keep your eye on this, okay? You don't want anything to burn, you just want it to sort of soften down and you want the sweetness from the leeks to come through, the sweetness uh, from uh, the um, onion to come through. And then you want a lovely garlic sort of flavor in there as well. So I'm going in with two cloves of garlic. Okay, now, when it comes to garlic, you do what you feel is right in your heart. For me, two cloves of garlic feels about right. If you're not such a big fan, use maybe one clove of garlic. But we love garlic in this house, so we're using two cloves. So you keep that sort of working away, mixing around. Very, very important that you don't burn the garlic, otherwise you're going to get this really, really... Um, bitter sort of a taste, and that's not what you want at all. Um, similarly, if you burn the um, onions or you burn the, uh, the leeks, you're gonna get this bitter sort of taste, and you don't want that at all. So just keep on sweating that down. Like I said, a nice medium heat is absolutely fine for this, and just keep working that away. You need a good five, 10 minutes uh, on this to just get it nice and soft and reduced, okay? Don't rush it too much. Whilst this is cooking down, I'm just gonna go through the other ingredients. So of course it's a risotto, you need risotto rice, arborio rice in this case, ready available for most shops, okay? Next, the, uh, the risotto is gonna cook in a stock, in a liquid. And we've used just uh, vegetable uh, stock, uh, stock pot that I've just dissolved in some water. So that's ready to go as well. And then we're going to use some peas in there as well. And so we'll have our leek element, and then we have obviously our pea element as well to go in there. And the cheese will be added towards the end. So risotto rice, we've got the stock, 
we've got the peas, um, and we're pretty much good to go for the next stage. This is sweated down nicely, it's nice and soft in here. Um, and then we're gonna add in the risotto. So the risotto rice goes in. Now at this point, I like to turn up the temperature a little bit. So you get a bit more heat in there and it's really important this point. You add in the risotto at this point, the, the dry risotto rice, and it picks up a lot of the flavors you've already imparted uh, in the butter, the oil, the onions, the garlic, uh, the leeks, uh, especially so. So we're just mixing that all in. And once that's nicely coated, then we're gonna put in uh, the stock in there. And I wanna to speak to you about this a little bit whilst this risotto is just taking up the flavor, the risotto rice is taking up the flavor. Now, a lot of people think risotto is a bit of a pain to make. You have to stand over this dish. No, you don't, there's no standing over this dish. There's no stirring continuously. You put all the liquid in at the start, the mixing comes in at the end. So essentially, once the lid goes on, you've got about 20 minutes to do your own thing, perhaps do another job around the house, or simply just go on Instagram or go on your phone, and, or have a cup of tea and just chill out for a little bit. So that's why I love this dish so much, and that's why I make it uh, quite often. So the risotto has just taken up the flavor of everything that you've put into the base. Then we're just gonna get the vegetable stock in, that goes in now as well. And as that's coming up to a simmer, we're gonna put the frozen peas in at this end, uh, at this stage. Now I've used frozen peas and I've designed this recipe because I, I was trying to think what do people have and nearly everyone I know has some frozen peas in the freezer. Now these mighty peas just may seem humble but they're full of protein, they're full of uh, other nutrients. So like I said, we're just adding not only more flavor to this dish, because they're sweets as well, we're adding a protein element to this dish, a vegetable protein element to this dish, um, and we're adding some more nutrients and more vegetables to it, so it can only be a good thing. So that goes in, and just mix that through. Put the lid on. So once you've mixed that through and you've brought this up to a simmer, you then put the lid on and essentially you leave it for 20 minutes. You set your timer and it should look almost, we're almost there in 20 minutes time. And I'll show you the next final stages after that. So the lid is gonna go on and reduce the heat down. So it's just bubbling away. You don't want it, you don't want it a very fast simmer, just a really slow simmer, just bubbling away underneath there. You're going to have a beautiful risotto in about 20 to 25 minutes. So 20 minutes for this to cook and five minutes for us to bring the magic to this dish, okay? So the lid's going to go on and I shall see you guys in about 20 minutes cooking time. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> so that, my friends, has had 20 minutes of cooking time. I have not stirred it once. I have had a little bit of a peek at it because I'm just a bit nosy and want to see how it's getting on because you really don't want it bubbling away too much. You just want it bubbling away just a little bit, so have the heat on quite low. So let's have a little look how it's looking. Take the lid off. Just give it a bit of a stir. Now you'll notice that there's still quite a lot of uh, liquid in there. Do not be alarmed by this. Now do you remember I said there's no messing around, there's no constantly stirring? This is when we do the stirring. So for 20 minutes, we've done nothing. Now we're going to do all the stirring. And the reason the stirring is important, you release all the starch and that's what makes your risotto really lovely and really creamy. So let's get on with that stirring. So we're just going to give this maybe a couple of minutes. It won't take very long at all uh, to get it nice and creamy. But of course, we're going to add some wonderful cheeses to it. Now, this is called the big cheese and it's called that for a very good reason. And I've gone true to true to form true to the name of the big cheese and i'm using two types of cheese uh, in this and i'll talk to you about that in a little bit now i'm mixing this through and i can already see the mixture is getting thicker and creamier which is great 
Now remember, we've just had our base in there of garlic, uh, garlic, leek, um, and onion. Uh, we've had uh, 200 grams of risotto arborio rice and 600 ml of vegetable stock. Um, about 70 grams of peas, uh, all went in, all got mixed together, lid on, go away. And now we're just doing a little bit of work to just bring it to the next level, okay? So, in my opinion, cheese and risotto sort of goes hand in hand. And we've already used one of uh, the Dragon products, the wonderful salted uh, butter, which carries so much flavor with it. Um, the next one I'm going to use is the vintage cheddar and leek, of course. I've got leek in the risotto, I'm gonna use leek in the cheese as well. Now I love this cheese. Not only has it got the richness, the maturity of uh, the cheddar, which is super creamy as well, it's got some leek in it as well, which gives it a kind of oniony pop, which brings this whole dish to kind of new level. Uh, and I absolutely love it. So I've just mixed that through. And that's already looking nice and thick for us. And I'm really happy with that. The peas will be perfectly cooked because remember they go in frozen. And that's looking nice and thick. Now we're going to go in with the cheese. Okay, so I've just crumbled up some of that vintage cheddar and leek cheese. And I think, yeah, let's go in with it all. 100 grams of quality cheese. Okay, cheese made in Wales using Welsh farms, Welsh cows, Welsh meat, uh, Welsh milk. Uh, we're talking about, you know, buch Cymraeg, uh, cows Cymraeg. You can't ask better for that. And I absolutely love uh, using Welsh produce. I live in Wales, I have done for the last 20 years or so. And the products like this just really mean everything to me. And I love supporting um, places like Dragon Cheese that do such an exceptional job with such exceptional produce. So that cheese is just getting mixed in there. And now I do what I did earlier. I put the lid on, the heat has been turned off. So after 20 minutes, remember to turn off the heat and let that just chill for a couple of minutes. Whilst that's just chilling away, I just want to talk to you about the other cheese we're going to use uh, on top of this. So we're gonna use uh, this, the Halimon cheddar, which is part of their handcrafted uh, range. So this is wonderful cheeses that have each been given special care and attention uh, to bring different characteristics to this. This particular one has been blended with some Halimon uh, salt. In my opinion, some of the best salt in the world. Uh, from the Menai Straits, uh, the cheese has this extra, salty quality to this, which brings some minerality, brings some uh, savory sort of flavor to the dish. And we're gonna use this very sparingly when we serve the dish. So we'll serve the dish out and then we'll grate some of this on top. This will be our Parmesan, but way, 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 way nicer, okay? So that's what we're gonna do with this from the handcrafted range. And I can't wait to show you how I plate up this dish. So we're gonna move to the table now and I'll just show you uh, what to do. But before I do that, I'm going to add some herbs to this. So we're using just some chopped up parsley. So I just lift the lid. I'm just going to put in a little sprinkle of chopped up flat leaf parsley. Now, fresh herbs to me are like uh, jewelry for food. They're like food bling in my opinion, because not only do they add flavor, uh, the green pop just makes it look really appetizing. So that goes in, I just mix that in there. and I think we're ready to plate. I'm just gonna go over to the table, I'll plate this up for you, and I'll show you how this looks. And there you have it, my very super simple one pot wonder dish, this leek and pea risotto, using the most humble ingredients and making something extraordinary. Really easy to make as you've seen, and tastes absolutely delicious. You put this in front of your family and they'll be very happy. I've just simply finished it with a crack of black pepper, some extra parsley on top, and then loads, and I mean loads, of that halimon cheddar, which acts like a seasoning to this dish. So no need to add extra salt at all. There's enough in the cheeses and the stock to season this perfectly. I love this dish. 
For me, if I've had a rubbish day, this fixes it. If I'm not feeling well, this fixes it. And honestly, I could only describe it as a kutch in a bowl. So let's just try this dish. So, so tasty. For the amount of minimum input you put in, the reward is so big. I urge you to try making this dish for your family. All the recipe details are on the Dragon Whales website. Please go check it out. I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, video. I've enjoyed making it as you've seen. Um, and hopefully I shall see you on the next video. So thank you very much and see you next time. Bye now.